This week on Dear Veronica, virtual reality. But is it still awesome if your eyes kind of suck? Welcome back to Dear Veronica, everyone. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont. Recently, at Dan Loves Pipes, wanted to know what was worse than Komodo Firewall. At Gillis Steven, shot back with, Mondays are worse. Also, late night Taco Bell. I half disagree. Mondays are definitely worse, but late night Taco Bell can be life saving. They don't call me Taco Belmont for nothing. Seriously, someone calls me that. Anyhow, moving along, virtual reality is kind of a big deal right now, but not everyone has a super easy time with it. I used to puke almost every time I tried it, and studies have found that some people, particularly women, have difficulty with the shape from shading aspect of 3D, which can make them feel sick. But beyond that, what about people with little to no depth perception? Dear Veronica, will VR work if you have monocular vision? Thanks, Scott. I had to look that up because I assumed it doesn't just mean you wear a monocle, but you might actually if you have monocular vision. It can mean either that one of your eyes doesn't see at all or that for some reason you don't have depth perception. Interesting. To learn more about how this may or may not affect your VR experience, I turn to Senior Engadget Editor Jessica Condit, freshly back from the Game Developers Conference. Jess? The human brain wants to believe the visual cues that it's, that it's receiving. Monocular vision, uh, if you have maybe one eye that doesn't work uh, as well as the other eye, or you can't see it all out of one eye, you're still gonna have a fine time in VR uh, because your brain is trying to believe that this is the real world you're looking at. So it's not gonna be all that different uh, than you actually walking around in the real world. One thing that you might that you might find is a little more motion blur. Your eyes aren't aren't going to be able to maybe get rid of that extra noise. And then uh, maybe some 3D objects may not pop out quite as much, a little depth perception kind of thing there. But even that's not going to be that bad. So if you have monocular vision, if you have binocular vision, if you have trinocular vision, that doesn't exist, I hope. Uh, you should be just fine in VR. That sounds very encouraging. Thanks, Jess. But what about those of us with just normal bad vision, like me, for example? Jessica also took the time to let us know how three of the most popular VR headsets stacked up when used by glasses wearers. I have had the awesome fortune uh, to be able to play all three of the major VR headsets hitting the market soon. Um, and I did so recently at the Game Developers Conference out in San Francisco. And I did that while wearing these huge, monstrous frames. The PlayStation VR headset was probably my favorite in terms of comfort because it's lighter. Uh, it has more straps and a little more uh, ways to make it fit your, your whole head better. Um, and it didn't really push on my, on my glasses at all. Like I felt it, but it wasn't uh, in the way. So that was kind of nice. The Oculus Rift was probably my least favorite headset to wear with glasses. Uh, when I was playing a game with these on, I actually asked to try it without my glasses on, and it turns out I'm still blind in virtual reality, so that didn't go over so well. However, the game was still totally playable, the headset fit, it, but I definitely felt it squishing my frames. And then the HTC Vive, uh, that headset is pretty spectacular. It is definitely heavy, kind of like the Oculus Rift, uh, but it didn't squish my frames as much. I didn't feel the, the kind of pressure that I, that I did with the Oculus Rift. Um, however, there was a strip of light at the bottom of my eyesight. Um, and I got this a few times using all of the headsets, but with the Vive, I definitely felt it a little bit more. Uh, that could have just been some adjustment I needed to make on the back, uh, but it didn't take me out of the experience, but it was definitely something I noticed. If you're really gonna get into this VR thing and it's gonna be taking up hours and hours of your time, invest in some contacts or some smaller frames just to be sure you're not gonna be completely squished. Great intel. I have a rift coming, so we'll see how it works out. Last but not least this week, a comment from at FB on the web. Wanted to watch the latest episode of Dear Veronica. Did not come up because I typed Dear Ironica. Very sorry, as you deserve better. I don't know what that means but I think we all deserve a little better, don't you? When everything is run by super smart artificial intelligence, we won't have these issues, probably because the search algorithms will be vastly improved or because our consciousness will be uploaded to the Google Board Collective and we'll never need to type anything. We'll just intuitively know all the answers to our questions and Dear Veronica will just loop endlessly in the background of some process that was never fully assimilated. Have a great week, everyone. Welcome back to Dear Veronica, everyone. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont. What was that? What was that? The f was that? So, nope. Come on. No, Brett. Come on.
That prompter is in reverse. There we go. And three. My laptop's back! Ted, Ted. Ted, Ted. Three. Yes. Hello. Back to the show. Back to the show. Here we go.